Hello superstars, my name is Tara Brabazon, I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to this, our fourth vlog. Now as we talked about at the start of this vlog series, each week will have a different inflection or a different goal. Some weeks I will answer your questions and that's been tremendous. Other weeks I'll present to you research from doctoral studies or higher education studies. And some weeks I'll present innovations in and through new media that I cluster around the phrase digital doctorates or the disintermediated doctorate. Now all I mean by those sorts of phrases is that the PhD you do in 2016 should be different from a PhD that was supervised in 2015 or 2010 or 1990. We need to ensure that the PhD in which you are enrolled and from which you graduate is modern, is interesting. You are getting the most innovative techniques, not only in terms of your supervision, but also in terms of your post doctoral care. So we're giving you skills that are not only useful right now for your PhD candidature, but can disseminate your scholarship and build a career either in the public or private sector later on. Big, fabulous. So this week we're doing one of those types of sessions. And our focus this week is on sound, sonic media and podcasts. So I've called this vlog The Sounds of a PhD student. Ooh! But first, let's do some fantastic shout outs. Firstly, to the Tonsley crew, brilliant. To Ben, thank you so much for stopping me outside of that beautiful building. Great to see you, mate. Hope to see you again soon. To Omar, was so lovely spending Friday afternoon with you, mate. That was tremendous. Oh wow, to the truly beautiful Sue. Sue brought roses, apples and limes from her beautiful garden to me last week and it was just lovely. Uh, I'm living in a really appalling environment at the moment. The, probably the worst house, in inverted commas house, it's a cellar, the worst place I've ever lived in my entire life. It is just dreadful and the flowers added so much light and happiness and those limes, I really cleaned those up. So thank you so much Sue. I really I appreciate it and I appreciate you. Queen Cathy, I've been playing Kate Bush's Wuthering Heights in your tribute all week. And finally to the glorious Tiffany Tiff, you are fabulous. And Tiff, in some ways I decided to do this work on sound and sonic media this week for you to help us think through strategies for creative led methods and how we can talk in and through them in a doctorate and allow them to survive post the doctorate as well. But let's start by talking about your ears. A book that's in my top 20 books of all time is written by a guy called David Howes, H-O-W-E-S, and the book is called The Empire of the Senses. Howes argues that our eyes are a colonising sense. What that means is you tend to believe what you see and doubt what you hear, what you taste or what you touch. But this also means there's an opportunity to freshen up your learning, freshen up your engagement with the world, freshen up your doctorate by learning in and through your ears. So here are my Tara's 10 tips for the use of sound in your PhD. Now some of these may be useful right now to you, just a couple, but I think all of them will be of use to you in the next five years of your life. So pick and mix, see what's useful. So how I'm framing today is some of these strategies may be useful if you're feeling a bit stuck. So your writing is getting a bit messed up, you can't get your ideas out, yeah? If that's you at the moment, there's a couple of crucial strategies here. But also for guys and gals who want to disseminate their ideas, who want to move their ideas into an audience to get a job, I've got some strategies for you as well. So I want you heard. So are you ready? Let's begin with Tara's tip one. Record 
your supervisory sessions with your supervisor. Now, as a lot of you know, I've supervised a lot of guys and gals with impairments. One of my favorite students ever in the history of the world, don't tell anyone, is the legendary Dr. Mike Kent. Mike is currently the head of department of internet studies at Curtin University. I'm so proud of him. He is a remarkable scholar. And Mike completed his PhD with me uh, in two years. He also manages dyslexia on a daily basis. So we had to come up with new and innovative strategies to manage his supervision while we're also managing the dyslexia. But of course the strategies we came up with are useful, incredibly useful for guys and girls who don't have dyslexia. So what we did, we did two things. Firstly, we lengthened his meetings to one hour a week rather than half an hour a week. And secondly, he recorded them on an MP3 recorder. He was the only person that heard it, but I'll explain how we used it. So what we did during that hour that was being recorded is we discussed high theory, really complicated stuff, top end stuff. We argued, we still argue, we disagree about just about everything. But what we did was we rehearsed the arguments of his doctorate. We rehearsed interpretations that were available. So we worked through the arguments. At the end of the hour, Mike took the MP3 recorder, took it home, took the file home, and listened to it throughout the week on a loop while he was writing his chapter. So to manage the dyslexia, the sound led his screen. He could hear and use the hearing and the listening to write. He pumped out chapters at incredible speed, and yes, after two years, he submitted his PhD. So do ask your supervisor if this is an option, and please be very respectful if they say it's not. I completely understand some people are worried about sound, and they're worried about where it can go. You might like to explain, as in Mike's case, that he was the only person who heard those recordings. But could I also say a big love to Mike, if those of you who are interested in the relationship between disability and online environments and Web2 environments, I draw you to Dr. Mike Kent's work. He is a remarkable scholar on his own and also in his great collaborations with the extraordinary, I love you Katie, Dr. Katie Ellis. So if you're interested in the online environment, impairment and disability, those two scholars are leading the world. So big hug Mike, big hug Katie. Tara's tip two record yourself speaking an argument. So relax yourself, loosen yourself up, and let your talking guide your ideas. So let's take your supervisor out of the equation for the moment, and let's just talk about you. Sometimes when you're reading, and sometimes when you're writing, you tie yourself up in knots. Do you find this? So you're reading or you're writing, and you go, what am I saying here? Don't worry, that happens to absolutely everybody. Happens to me all the time. I'm working and I go, what's the argument? What's the point I'm trying to make? Right, now if you are in that situation, switch on your mobile phone's microphone and there's plenty of free apps available that give you that microphone and start to speak your argument. Pretend if, that you're talking to me, if you like. So for example, Michelle and Sue, that's what I did with you guys last week. So pretend that I am asking you the following questions and speak your answer into your mobile phone. So here are your questions to trigger that sort of freedom of thought. What is your original contribution to knowledge? Second question. What is the point, what is the role of this chapter in your PhD? And the final direct question I use to my students, to, it's a bit provocative, but I use it particularly when guys and gals are moving to write their conclusion. So they're tired, they're emotional, they're saying to me that I've got nothing else to say, Tara, what am I going to put in the conclusion? The question I give them to provoke their conclusion is, I'm about to spend three days of my life reading your PhD. Explain to me why I should give a damn about it. Explain why I should care. Answer that question for me. Speak the answer. Now don't judge yourself. Let the emotion, let the sounds lead the way. Interpret, convince me, be very subtle, but enjoy, relax. And then press stop, hear it back. 
and you might find that your writing blockage is suddenly gone. So let's now move to tip three, which is particularly useful for our part-time candidates, but again, our full-timers might find of use too. So tip three, capture quick ideas on the phone when you're on the run. Now this idea has come from my amazing PhD student, the wonderful Anne McLeod. Hi Anne. Anne is in an incredibly busy full-time job. She has a wonderful husband, hi Paul, and fantastic twins. And she uses my 30 minutes a morning strategy. If she didn't get that 30 minutes in in the morning, she would never have an opportunity to write. But Anne had another problem. She couldn't find the two minutes the night before to frame what she was going to write about the morning after. Now that is a busy woman and she is that busy. But we came up with a strategy for that because we found out Anne was having ideas while she was doing a hair, while she was brushing her teeth, while she was parking, while she was <laughs> all sorts of things, while she was shopping, while she was on the commute. So what Anne started to do was have the microphone of her iPhone ready and she would record an idea. So I'm going to think about this tomorrow morning. Think about this scholar and this idea. So she just literally record 15 seconds. She would then hear that recording the next morning and that would trigger her 30 minutes of writing. So that's a great strategy for really, really busy part-time students with a full-time life and it works incredibly well. So well done, Anne. Let's go to tip four. Listen to great international lectures. Right. So those of you who have heard a lot of my podcasts with my beloved husband, Professor Steve Redhead, know that we do a lot of work on doctoral education, but we also do a lot of work on the examination process. We talk a lot about the examination. As, and as most of you know, Steve and I, when we examine, we read the bibliography first. Most examiners do. So in the space of one hour reading your bibliography, we know if you're going to pass or fail. But you see, we're now in a digital age. So when we're looking at your bibliography, we're also looking for a diversity of multimodal platforms. So can this candidate manage a diversity of media, a diversity of genres? Can they show information literacy and information management between the analog and digital environments? Think about if your bibliography shows that, by the way. And one of the best ways and easiest ways to add innovation to your bibliography is to use iTunes U. So go into the Apple iTunes Store and for free, there's a section called iTunes U. So some of the best universities in the world have some of the best scholars in the world recording their lectures and seminars that are available for you to listen to. So do a search, find hundreds of lectures in your area of interest and expertise. So obviously Stanford and Duke got into iTunes U very, very early. Great stuff there. But I also recommend from the wonderful Coventry University in the UK, their great Coventry Conversation and from Aotearoa, New Zealand, the wonderful Otago, wonderful university, has a great humanities series that is available to download for free. So download these podcasts, listen to them while you're exercising, while you're on the commute, or you just want to give your eyes a rest from screen work, and then add that to your bibliography. Brilliant, quick, easy, and free. Now, the first four tips that I've given you there for sound, sonic media and doctoral education have really been about listening. The remaining six are going to be about you, how you can record your ideas so that the rest of the world can hear them. So it's about disseminating your research. Also, making you famous. You ready? But before we get there, I have to do a quick kit interlude. As some of you know, my prior life, I was a professor of media and I love my media kit. So let me save you some time, save you some money and talk about the best tech that's available to you. So firstly, if you want to just put your toe in the water of recording your ideas, basically mobile phones are pretty good now. 
The hardware is pretty good and the software, the apps that you can download are reasonable in editing files. So GarageBand, that's fine. But if you wanted to aim just a little bit higher, I've got a series of hardware and software options to recommend to you. Firstly, can I recommend a wonderful German firm to you? They are fantastic. The firm is called Zoom. Their baseline hardware microphone that's available for you is the Zoom 2. It's cheap, it's accessible, very easy to use, really good. I use the Zoom 6, so this is the beast. I love the Zoom 6. This is the industry standard. The BBC uses this. It is a fantastic bit of kit. You may not need this. The Zoom 2 or the Zoom 4 may do your work for you. But also what I'd say is whatever kit you get, and particularly I would get a Zoom, spend 10 bucks and get a pop screen which is this. And what a pop screen does is you put it in front of the microphone and it stops the p -p -k 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 going through and destroying your recording. So a pop screen, you just simply attach it to a desk, put it down, put the microphone in front and you are good to go. So we're winning. Let's do a quick conversation about software. So the software that will enable you to edit your sonic files recorded on the Zoom, you can use Audacity, which is an open access, open source mode. You can use that. What I'd say to you though is you'll need an MP3 plugin, so it's a little bit messy. If you want a cheaper and easier version of software that's terrific, and again, it's a German firm, I blame Kraftwerk, it's a German firm, they're a wonderful firm called Acoustica, Acoustica, and the software I recommend is called Mixcraft. So it's Acoustica Mixcraft. All the loops are freely available. You can basically have your own radio station in a box. It's fantastic. So think Zoom, think Mixcraft. Now let's turn you into Sonic Stars and continue with the tips and go to tip five. And this is record your public presentations, your seminars, and perhaps even a public lecture to widen out their audience. Let me explain. Being a PhD student at a conference is really tough. Nobody knows who you are, nobody comes and listens to you, it seems like a complete waste of time. And often, guys, it is. So let me give you a solution. What I'd advise is every single presentation you deliver, you record it. Either before you deliver it, so you record it at home, you record it live, or you record it afterwards. And you mix it up, you get it nice and clean, and you upload it to an online environment that I'll talk about in a second, that gives you a URL that you can list on your CV. Now why this matters is suddenly you've got a presentation that will live beyond its analogue life. So deliver a presentation to five people and it's over. But how do you prove your communication skills, your ability to future employers, to people all around the world? Well one answer is you record your research and put it on your CV and they can hear it. So where are we uploading your file so you get that URL? I have two solutions for you. One is free and the other one has a small cost. So the free option is a wonderful website called the Internet Archive, www.internetarchive.org. You can upload your sonic files for free, have keywords, have descriptions, it's beautifully configured, it's searchable through Google, they give you a clean embed file that you can use for the rest of your life. A second option is a paid subscription service. I use this, but guys, I'm a sonic media practitioner. This is part of my professional practice. But this service I use is LibSing, Liberated Syndication. I pay a small monthly fee. They give me information about who's downloading, where they are, all sorts of fascinating data, really. But all I'm saying to you is whatever you decide, what I want you to do is ensure that everything you do in your analog spoken life, in terms of research, has a digital life beyond it. And therefore people around the world who may employ you can hear your communication skills. Wicked. Tip 
six. Ask your school if it's possible to record or disseminate a seminar series. Now similarly, your school and many of the wonderful schools at Flinders do this, have a seminar series. Big hi to all my colleagues in law, I love your law series, you are tremendous. And also, for example, if we use arts as an example, or science, you have a yearly workshop series. Do see if it is possible to capture some or all of those presentations via a Zoom. It's very important you're always respectful of colleagues who don't want to be recorded. Many colleagues don't want to be. That is their choice. You've got to respect that. But do ask if that is an option for your school or your faculty because it can sonically brand the research for the rest of the world. So all you're going to need is a Zoom. You're going to need Mixcraft and you're going to need the Internet Archive. Tremendous. And then all of a sudden, all these fantastic sonic presentations can live on your school's website. Your profile can be searched and the research of your colleagues and yourself can be found. So if anybody in your, in your school or faculty is interested in doing this, a short blonde dean is available for you at any time. Happy to have a 10 minute conversation and we will get you sorted quickly. Tip seven. Ooh, participate in our Office of Graduate Research podcast series. So as some of you may know, in fact all of you should know because I've sent you the links, three of your doctoral colleagues have spent 15 minutes with me already and they have produced the first three podcasts in our Office of Graduate Research podcast series. So all my love, all my respect to Glory, to Matty and to Michelle, didn't they do well? Now, do remember, I am your Dean, I am your Dean, and if you'd like to practice some ideas, trial some of the strategies we're talking about now, you send me an email. Send me some of your research, your research proposal, PowerPoints, anything you like. I'll configure some questions for you. Come in, we'll spend 15 minutes. You can make as any, many errors as you like, have as many goes as you like, and we'll get you to have that first podcast expressing your ideas. So use me to give you that little bit of training if you want it. Oh, and for my off-campus guys and gals, don't think you're out of this. We can do it by phone, we can do it by Skype. So I'd love to hear from you. We have just under 1,200 PhD and Master's students at Flinders. I've only recorded three of you. I have a very long way to go. Get in touch with me. Tip eight. And this one is for the research groups at Flinders. So we have wonderful groups. And I was particularly thinking when I was writing this tip this week for our great nursing crew out there. I'm so proud of our nursing researchers. So successful, so wonderful and such a powerful and great group. And we have fantastic labs around the university as well composed of really outstanding scholars. So say you want to do a group presentation. So you have an interesting idea you'd like to explore. One of you writes three or four scaffolding questions. You all have a cup of coffee and one morning you record it, almost like it is an informal seminar or an informal panel, yeah? And then you upload that and all of you can link that to your CV. So that's very exciting because really innovative new ideas, cutting edge ideas, can punch out into a public discourse. Really useful. Tip number nine. This is a specialist use of sound that may not be appropriate for you right now but could be very appropriate for you when you are supervising. And remember, for a lot of you near the end of your candidature, you may be an associate supervisor, you may be supervising in one year's time. So don't think this is way in the future, this could be you in 2017. So this is a particular technique of doctoral supervision that is only appropriate for particular groups. You need really confident supervisors and really confident students and they need to get together. I'm lucky I have that at the moment, sometimes you don't. So what we do with these sonic supervisory sessions is as follows. As most of you know, I run weekly supervisory sessions of 30 minutes in length. So we run the meeting for 25 minutes, and then in the final five minutes, I turn on the Zoom. And we record a compressed series of sonic notes about what we've talked about and the big things to think about in the week to come. 
Often what happens is Steve presents a high theoretical point which will enable the students to have really complicated ideas and interpretations for the following week. So this is great because the students have a real-time recording of something powerful, something passionate that they can hold on to and they can write up. Now remember, if your supervisor is not media savvy, not comfortable, do not go into this area. But if you've got that great experience of really confident supervisors who are media savvy and really media savvy students, this is a transformative method for doctoral education. Now TIFF, the reason why I particularly wanted to mention you in this one is this strategy is profoundly important for creative led research projects because you can demonstrate the entire artifact development and method development through it. So my amazing student Mark Brown, hi wonderful Mark, is doing this at the moment. So every podcast we construct, every moment of prototype development that he records, he feeds into his website. So that means the creative led method is captured in real time and examiners can later look at how it has developed in real time. So it's a great way to log the method. Very happy to introduce TIFF to Mark and you two can talk about this but for creative led projects whether it's in the high humanities or creative led projects in the sciences this is really useful. Okay last one. Tip 10. Do an interview with a friend in an emerging area of research to give them an information scaffold. Now this strategy is not only useful for PhD students but will be useful for the rest of your research career. Let me explain. And also can I say if you want to hear this in action, I did this with Steve. Steve had a big idea about a year ago around a phrase theoretical times. And he wasn't quite sure if it was a refereed article or if it was a book. He just needed somebody to push him a little bit to see if he could actually configure what the chapters of that book could be. So this happens, and this is very useful, if you think you've got a great idea, but you just can't nail it down, you just can't in your head sketch out the shape of it. So what you do is you get a mate, you get a really clever friend to scaffold questions for you, and then they enable you, they give you that pathway to explore that idea to its completion. Now I did this with Steve through six podcasts in what we call the Theoretical Times series. They're on LibSync, they're on the Internet Archive, and each potty took a particular concept and really pushed Steve. So reproletarianization was one of them, claustropolitanism was another one. So I really worked him hard. We were absolutely sweating and shattered by the end of it. But having to explain these ideas to another person allowed him to flesh out what is becoming, probably I think, his best book. It also provided great publicity for the articles and the books that were to come because we sent links out, for example, to Twitter and all sorts of colleagues, people we hadn't even met, contacted Steve, congratulated him on the project, started to comment and talk about where the project could go, interesting ideas, he's picked up refereed articles through those podcasts, he's picked up book chapters through that podcast. So incredibly important and so new collaborations can become available through this type of new media exploration. So never underestimate sound. I know we live in a screen dominated age guys but every now and again there may be value in just closing the lid of your laptop and saying you know what I'm just going to explore knowledge through my ears just for a change. It'd be amazing how you can discover new types of knowledge that come through Sonic Media. So thank you so much for being you. I hope there were some strategies that you may find useful now or in the next five or ten years. And as always, I love hearing from you. Send me an email, send me a tweet, find me on Facebook, come into the office. You are tremendous. And as always, I wish you for the coming week, love, light and peace. Tea out. See you guys.